What is going on everyone, welcome back to another video, and today we're checking out the Gaumon S6 Train Drawing Tablet, so without further ado, let us get right into it. So what we have here is an easy to use plug and play $3 drawing tablet that not only works on your computer, but it also works on your smartphone as well, which is pretty exciting and we'll take a look at that in just a bit. That being said, let's quickly go over what we have in the box. So we have the tablet itself, we have four mappable buttons right here that are nice and tactile. We have a nice solid rubber cable that is a micro USB with a right angle of course. The stylus pen as well as the stylus pouch, which supports about 8000 pressure points. It's got a nice rubber grip, it feels really good in the hand, it's got two buttons, and of course about 10 replacement tips which you have saw in the intro. And that is actually pretty impressive for a $30 drawing tablet because uh, I remember getting my Wacom tablet and that was like a couple years ago and it was about a hundred dollars and with that one i believe they only included about three tips which isn't a whole lot but again you're not going to be eating these you're going to be using them and they should last you for years but still nonetheless pretty impressive now if you're wondering no this thing does not have an erase back so if you want to erase anything you have to do the mapping right here using the software which we'll take a look at in just a bit or use the buttons on the pen itself and no it does not require any batteries then we have the gliding glove which allows you to glide easily across the tablet as you're drawing and finally, these two little adapters right here, which are pretty awesome because they allow you to hook up this tablet into your smartphone. Now we do have a micro USB as well as a Type-C, but there is no lightning, which I'm guessing it doesn't work on Apple devices. So any modern Android device like a tablet or a smartphone that support OTG should be able to read this tablet no problem. So with that said, let's actually go ahead and actually try that out and show you guys what it looks like. So you're probably asking, how simple is the process? Well, it is as simple as plugging in your corresponding adapter, connecting it to your phone, and you're pretty much good to go. Oh, and figure out your cable situation. The cable here is about six feet, which is actually plenty of length. And pretty much as soon as you plug it in, depending on what kind of phone you have, you'll have a mouse icon on the top bar. Now you can see me scrolling around here and that does work, but of course it's not gonna work fully since this is not mapped to a mouse, it's not a touchpad, it is a drawing tablet, so it will stop eventually. So anyways, launch your favorite app and you should be able to start drawing right away without having to install or set up anything at all. And that is simply pretty awesome. Being able to do it on your phone anywhere, it's kind of magical. Now it is very responsive and I had so far no issues running this thing. Doesn't matter what app I'm running, they all work perfectly fine. You can see that I can go very thin and then go very thick. Now this is not a perfect marker, but let's go ahead and try something else. You can see your little dot on the screen where you can actually start moving it around, which is really nice. And if you're running the app and you plug it in, it will actually tell you that a drawing tablet has been detected. So let's go on and move on to another app. You can see it's a very nice thin line and we are kind of vectorizing, so it's a very clean image. And at this point, you probably noticed that I'm not an artist, but you could probably sell this for a million dollars if you really tried. Maybe it's a pickle, I don't know. Are there any disadvantages? Is there anything you cannot really do while using this tablet or this phone? Or what I should be saying is that the downsides I'm going to be listing are mostly Android bound. So it's not the tablet's fault, it is the Android OS itself and its support. So let's go ahead and move on to another app and show you guys what I'm talking about. So at this point you have probably noticed that I'm holding the phone in portrait mode. And uh, the reason is, is that Android itself does not support landscape. I have done some little research, not a whole lot, but it seems like I cannot find a video where someone is using the Android with a plug and play drawing tablet in the landscape mode. And not only that, but all the apps that I have installed, all four of them, none of them actually rotate when I rotate my phone. And there's no options in the settings to actually use it in landscape, which brings me to think it is simply non-existent and it is something that is bound to Android itself. It just doesn't want to do it. On to the next thing you should know about depending on what kind of phone you have. So since last year, most of the phones that are coming out on the market have a taller profile or a wider aspect ratio, which means this tablet might have some issues actually adapting to these phones. Is it terrible? Well, not really. It's not that bad, but it's something definitely worth mentioning, especially if you're a professional artist that just wants to doodle around every now and then. So the tablet here, I believe, is probably 16 by 10, which is the standard for these things. This phone is not a 16 by 10 and it's not a 21 by 9, but when you try to draw a circle or a square, they'll most likely be kind of skewed. And what I mean by that is that they're not going to be perfect. A square will most likely look like a rectangle and a circle will look like an oval. And as you guys can see, I'm using the squares on the tablet itself, the little dots that indicate where the drawing area is, and I'm drawing around them to see if I can replicate a proper square square. Now, as you can see, most of them are a bit taller than they should be. Now, if I try to draw any circles, we can see that they're kind of oval shaped as well, and they're not perfect circles. It's not just because of my bad drawing, but it's also because of the tablet itself. So it is just something that you should keep in mind. It's actually not that bad because the proportions are not terrible, and as you're drawing, you'll actually see where your pointer is. So messing up shouldn't be that bad. But of course, if you have trained muscle memory, then that might throw you off just a tiny bit. And right now it's mostly mapped to the left side of the drawing tablet. If I draw on the right side, you can see that it kind of just uh, loses tracking and tracks on the edge of the phone. And that's really about it. If you want to draw on your phone with this tablet on the go, you'll have to hold your phone like this and it'll be drawing on the left side of the tablet, which honestly isn't that bad. 
So now what you're thinking, you're probably telling me to just turn the tablet on the side and just by doing that you can have a grand old time using it in landscape mode. Just grab yourself a stand, put your phone in and turn the tablet on its side and you should be good to go. And if you're wondering, yes, the buttons here do work in certain apps, but there's a limited functionality. The buttons on the tablet itself, on the other hand, do not work. And there's one last thing you should know about, and that would be the fact that there is an LED that lights up in the logo when you get the pen close to it, or when you press one of the buttons. And with that, that should be about everything you should know about this tablet being hooked up to your phone. So, moving on. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the software itself. It's pretty quick and easy to install. It's a small file to download, and you'll be set up in a couple of minutes. When you first open up the program, you'll end up with this window right here. You'll have four different tabs. In the About tab, you'll be able to export and import and set your default settings. Moving on to the Work area, you'll have your typical settings for setting up your aspect ratio, your work area, and what screen you want to use for your tablet. In this instance, I only have one screen, and it will show you a preview like the Wacom tablets on what the window would look like. In most cases, you'll probably just want to go ahead and set your screen ratio, and that's about it. Because if you guys remember, this is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, and the screen you have might be different. It might be 16 by 9, it might be a wide screen, so make sure you click screen ratio and not full area. You can use the full area if you really want to use the full area for certain applications. And now moving on to the stylus tab, this is where you can go ahead and set up your sensitivity. You have a couple options right here, and you can see what your sensitivity looks like as you press it, and you can track it in real time. Now I'm pressing really hard, and I'm not even getting that full 8191 pressure points. It seems like if I drop the sensitivity, I'll get close to it and pretty much reach it all the way. So you can set it up and see what works for you and what feels right. And of course, you can also set up your key bindings for your pen. So you'll end up with this window right here, which can allow you to do a bunch of things, run different programs, change your screen, different mouse buttons, and of course, different keyboard combinations, which is really nice. You also have this mouse mode right here, so you can actually turn this into a regular mouse. No, you cannot use your fingers, but you can use the pen itself to move around and play things like OS. And finally, we have your keys right here, the four keys on top. You can remap them with the same kind of layout software, so you can click on that, and you'll end up with this window right here, and it'll be good to go. No, you cannot set it up where you can have it per program, but for a $30 tablet, not bad at all for these type of settings. And finally, I'm going to open up a canvas on Photoshop and start drawing. Let's go ahead and set up my hardness to about 100%, and I should be able to draw without any hiccups. All right, so drawing on this thing is again very, very responsive, just like it is on the smartphone. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause my past me right there. Basically, what I'm doing right here is re-recording the segment to properly show you what the tablet performance is like when you try to draw straight lines slowly. Do you get jitter or do you get a nice clean line throughout the whole thing? Here's a quick line. We can see that it's very nice and clean. And now if we try to draw a slow line, as you can see, it's full of jitters. And for good measures, here's another flat object. So here's the first line. When doing it quickly, you'll get a nice clean result for the most part. And when you try to do it slowly, you'll end up with little jitters like this. Now, the ruler here, although it's pretty flat, it's not perfectly flat. I mean, there are micro bumps on it. It's not perfect. So that might be why we're getting these. Because when we actually go ahead and try out the other object, we get uh, slightly cleaner lines. But I do still feel like it still has jitters here and there. So is it perfect? No. Is it close enough? I would say, yeah, it's pretty good. And in most cases, you're not really going to be using a ruler. If anything, you might use a program to actually draw those lines properly, and you're just going to be tracing it in software. So not bad at all. It's still pretty good. All right, back to whatever I was doing. So knowing that, let's go ahead and actually try out the circle and square test again. And we can see things look a whole lot better than it is on the smartphone. So, so far so good for a relatively cheap tablet. Let's go ahead and actually try it out with a different program and see how it goes. And now let's go in and quickly test it out with Krita, which is an awesome free dedicated drawing program with many functions. And uh, as you can see, things look really good and very smooth. So let's go in and talk about something more important real quick. And that would be the fact that you actually have to press quite hard before you actually get anything to register. So when I do something like this, it is not drawing anything until I actually apply about uh, a key press worth of pressure. The pen doesn't register with its own weight. As you can see, it is not registering when I have it just gliding around the tablet until I actually start pressing about a keyboard press worth of pressure. And that's when it actually starts to register. Again, it is a $30 tablet and so far I really can't complain about it. And it's definitely a great starter point for anyone who wants to start drawing. Again, I'm not an artist, but I've owned two other Wacom tablets before. So I do have some experience doodling around every now and then. With that said, let's go ahead and play some OS. All right, you know what? Let's wrap this video up right here. I'm gonna save you some time, I'm gonna save you some suffering watching me play OS. So what's the conclusion? Well, it is a $30 tablet that runs on your computer and you're on your phone. And at the same time, it does a pretty good job working on both which is pretty impressive. Is it perfect? Well, of course not. It's a $30 tablet. But one thing for sure is that it's pretty damn close and I think it's a pretty great option for a starter tablet. So do I recommend it? I would say yeah, absolutely. Especially if you want to do some drawing on the go and you don't have a computer on you, you just want to have your phone. 
you could definitely do that with this thing and that is pretty awesome. So as always, if there's anything specific you guys want me to test out, do let me know in the comment section below. And with that, that is all for this video. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care everyone.